Hello guys, now let's talk about AWS Machine Learning Specialty Exam. I have passed this exam just uh, one week ago with a score of 894. And the first question is why I decided to take this exam. On the market we have many AI and machine learning specialists. Once of them are very advanced while I was uh, still in junior level. One sentence before going further. Before going into preparation for this exam, I have so limited experience in AWS. While the market is very dynamic to filter out who is AI and machine learning professional and who is a junior level or middle level AI developer with a high ambitions, become more and more difficult. AWS machine learning certification is one of the most difficult out of all possible exams provided by AWS and maybe out of all in this domain, I mean domain of AI. Because of this reason I think that this certification is one of the best filters which threw away beginners and middle level specialists from professionals. I had an experience in machine learning and deep learning for 3 or 4 years, so I feel that I'm ready to take this kind of exam. In addition to that, I think that by having this certification, I increase my value when getting new project, new task, and shows that you are professional for others. That's are the main reasons why I took this exam. The second question, how long I studied for the exam? The period of learning depends on your experience, and in my case, as I had a limited experience in AWS and some experience in Google Cloud, the full period of studying all the materials took around 4 months. At the very beginning I started with courses which providing the concept of AWS including SageMaker and other infrastructure. For this I used a couple of courses I will discuss in the next part of this video. At the beginning of my preparation I wrote all the details I thought were useful into papers in order to get the main keys into my brain. Later I started other courses providing additional details on AWS, SageMaker and machine learning services. Then started to write everything in Microsoft Word. But I did not like this kind of information systemization too much. Then I created a Notion.so dashboard where I stated to input all the important information given from the courses. After one month in my preparation I started go through practical courses. One of these were very good and useful while I were made by copy paste principle. I will tell more about it in the next part of this video. So I can tell you that till the last day of actual exam I solved selected practical tests to get the correct feeling before the final day. So as I mentioned before, the full period of my preparation including uh, to get intuition behind AWS machine le learning services and a specific question took around 4 months. The next topic in this video is the source of material that I use for preparation. I guess this part is one of the most interested for you. I have used 9 resources to get material about machine learning in AWS and to get practical tests. By saying shortly, for as the base of material I used 3 courses in Udemy by Frank Kane and Stephanie Marik, QuizLab and Linux Academy. The combination of these courses filled the gap between knowledge of machine learning and AWS infrastructure. As I went through all the courses, I filled the relevant information to Notion.so dashboard. Linux Academy provides a very well summary PDF that includes the main keys what is what while the Frank Kane and Stephanie Marie course provides almost 400 pages of PDF with very well organized material with specific details what you must know before exam. And WizLab is very well and easily explained topics in the video course itself. So that's where top 3 video courses in my preparation. Now let's talk about practical test. For practicing on practical test, I used Frank Kane at Udemy, Abhi Shik Singh at Udemy, QuizLab, Linux Academy and Cloud Guru, Tutorials Dojo Portal and TestPreparing.com test. And AWS Machine Learning Specialty Readiness also must to be mentioned in this list because uh, I used this uh, almost every week. Check my other videos in my channel to learn more about uh, this one. It is very useful, I promise. In my personal opinion, the courses that gave me highest value in my preparation are AWS Machine Learning Specialty Readiness from official AWS portal, where you will get a quizzes questions for each domain and extra 35 questions which really reflects the actual exam. 
The second one is Epishing Sync courses at Udemy where you will find two practical tests. Solve it again one or two days left to your actual exam. If you pass these tests around 90% or above, I think that get you comfortable feeling before actual exam. The next one is Tutorial Dojo. I like it very much because all answers are explained very well with main keys what you must to know before exam. From here I put a lot of information to my dashboard. What I like it very much in Tutorial Dojo is that questions here are different from other practical tests in my list and provide you very well designed questions on specific topics such as NLP, blazing text use case, SageMaker and Comprehend and etc. And explanations are shaped with a lot of aspects and pictures that let you intuition behind very easily. The links to cheat sheets are also very beneficial provided in this portal. And the one more included into my favorite list is brainsearch.com. I like this provider because it made a good job with collecting the most actual questions across the other practical tests in my list. And this provider get you a 5 different practical tests consisted of 50 questions with reflex the actual exam very well. The explanation in this portal are also very well designed. Make notes from them. I used brain search just a week before actual exam almost every day. Practical test from Linux Academy was also very good, but I preferred AWS Machine Learning Specialty Readiness, Tutorial Dojo and BrainSer.com practical test instead. Talking about Cloud Guru, practical tests were quite difficult, that is good, but the same questions were very difficult to understand and I was not sure that it reflects a real exam very well. But it is from my understanding, from my experience. But also I suggest to go through and make your own notes from Cloud Guru as well. Frank Kane practical test was useful as well, but quite easy to solve and most of questions are easily memorable instead of provocating to thinking about questions very deeply. Our courses on the internet were good to touch, but many questions were just copy paste from the ever mentioned courses chat before. So I did not waste my time on these ones. The next topic in this video is about bad and confusing resources. I had a very bad experience with examlabs.com. I purchased the WCA file with questions from practical test and video course from examlabs.com when I got a 40% discount offer in my email. I was badly surprised when opened the video course firstly. There was a copy to video from Udemy made by Frank Kane. On the top of that, the VCA file that Excel Labs provided it is not readable by a standard applications. You must buy another software to read these files. As you remember, it costs about 70 or 80 dollars. After a couple of hours, I found free online converter that converted that VCA file to PDF. From this point, I started to study this material in PDF. After several questions, I realized that something is wrong with these questions. Officially, Exam Lab states that their tests are verified by IT experts. The question looks less or more logical, but some answers I stated to be true apparently were wrong. After consulting with my college, I decided to notice about the situation to Exam Lab. After one week chatting, they decided to return my money. That's mean that they admit that their material a scam and not correct. More details about this experience you can find in another my video in my channel right here. But saying true, some questions provided by Exam Lab were the same as in actual exam, but the correct answer stated in Exam Lab's PDF and VCA file are very strange. Let's talk now about one day before the actual exam. Till the last hour were counting, I still solved practical test. For the last day, I decided to take a medium difficulty level practical test from Udemy provided by Abhishek Singh and Frank Kane. Be sure to achieve at least a 90% of all of these tests before the actual exam. Read carefully again requirements for the workspace. Your table must be clean. You must hide or bring it out all unnecessary things. And lastly, check again your machine by running system test again to feel safe in a case of any unexpected technical issue happens. It is very important. Because if it happens, your exam will be interrupted and you need a reschedule for the next time. It's very important. 
Now let's talk about the actual exam and how it looks like. The procedures before launching the exam began in Pearson VA application, where I have been waiting for my proctor. The proctor instructed about the further procedures I must to do. Before the exam, I was pleased to take a photo of my passport and make additional photos of my workspace. The proctor carefully checked the workspace and asked about the things that are visible around my table. They are strictly permitted to keep things in viewing zone which could be reached by hands. The work table must to be totally clean. A laptop is allowed only. After checking all the workspace requirements, the proctor informed that we could start the exam. The full exam is being launched in Pearson VA application which automatically close any other active application in your machine. The actual exam started 15 minutes earlier than it was scheduled. The exam itself runs in classical gray graphic user interface in full screen mode. The proctor supervises you via the webcam during the full exam. During my exam I have slightly changed my arm pose, then proctor immediately asked me to raise my hands up and show my wrist in front of the webcam to be sure that I'm not cheating. There were 65 questions in total. A major part of questions were different as I had during practical tests in my preparation. Few questions only were almost the same from practical tests. Other questions came with very specific situation description and required a deeper knowledge. You will not be allowed to have a calculator to perform calculation if a question requires to do it. If requires, the calculation should be not difficult and you must be able to do it in your brains. Most of calculation that you must perform quickly is related to metrics from confusion metrics such as precision, recall, F1 score, false positive rate and etc. The main tip for answering two questions. Look for keywords. If a question asks to find a cheaper solution, that is mean to select a solution that requires at least expensive services. If a question asks to find at least managed solution, try to find option which provides something from several services and so on. Ok, the last topic in this video. The result and certificate. The achieved results are being saved in AWS training and certification system after 24 hours since the exam end. If you pass the exam, the certificate in PDF will be available as well there. After completing your exam, you will get a score summary where you can check if you were below or above the threshold to meet domain competence. The certificate valid 3 years since the passing day. The name and surname written in certificate is the same as it provided in candidate name fields in Pearson Exam Center system. So please carefully to provide your full name correctly. Your certification account name must be listed using Romanian English alphabet characters only. So I hope this video was useful for you if you are preparing for this exam as well like me before. So uh, never stop learning. See you on the next video. Bye bye.